Oh, let's look a little more closely at the energy involved in forming a solution. We can think of this as three steps occurring. We have to separate the solute into individual particles. We have to pull them away from each other. That's always going to be endothermic. It's going to require energy because we have to overcome the intermolecular forces. So the change in enthalpy for, for that will be greater than zero. I think I've got the subscript wrong on that. I think that's supposed to be solute, not solution. Solute. We also have to separate the solvent particles to make room for the solute. Again, we have to break those intermolecular forces. That requires energy. So delta H for that is going to be greater than zero. Yeah, I was, I was trying to be too fancy. It's a long story, but there we go. So that's going to be greater than zero. We have to put energy in to break that. And then mixing the solute and the solvent particles will be exothermic because we're forming in attractions, interactions between the solvent and the solute particles. Even if they are not similar, polar and nonpolar, there's still an attraction from the dispersion forces. And so delta H for mixing them together will be less than zero. Energy will be given off. So what we see is the enthalpy of the solution is going to be the sum of those three changes. And the overall sign of that will depend on the magnitude of the individual terms. If it takes a lot of energy to break up the solvent particles, a little bit of energy to break up the solute particles, and you only gain a little bit of energy when they interact, then overall it's still going to be positive endothermic, and it's probably not going to happen. So solution formation can be exothermic or endothermic because we have these three factors, and the magnitude of them determines the overall sign of the enthalpy change. Okay, so let's look at this, chain, this uh, illustration. Let's call it an illustration. So we're starting out here. We've got the solvent aggregated, meaning it's attracted to each other, it's, it's together. And we have the solute aggregated. So we separate the solute particles, we, we break those up, and that requires an input of energy. Then we break up the solvent particles, so now we have these guys loose and separated so that they can mix. And then we mix them together, we, we gain energy back. Energy is given off. So if the sum of these is less than this, then we have a net exothermic process. Over here, separating the solute particles, separating the solvent particles, this total is larger than what we gain by mixing them together. And so forming this solution is an endothermic process, requires the input of energy. Does that make sense? Aqueous solutions of ionic compounds are the thing we look at the most. We can combine the enthalpy change for the solvent and the enthalpy change for mixing into um, what's known as the heat of hydration. So that is the, the loose solute particles and combining with the aggregated solvent. That's the enthalpy change that occurs when one mole of gaseous solute ions, so they're already separated, is dissolved in water. This is always going to be largely negative. It's going to be exothermic. And the change in enthalpy for the solute, separating those ions, 
is the same magnitude as the lattice energy for that ionic sol solid. But the sign is different because we're pulling apart instead of putting together. So we can say that the heat of solution is equal to the enthalpy change of the solute plus the enthalpy change for the solvent plus the enthalpy change for the mixture. That's what we were looking at before. This is now called the heat of hydration. So the overall, the heat of the solution is the heat of solute plus the heat of hydration. This will always be negative and this will always be positive. And so again, we're looking at relative strengths here. So here we have potassium fluoride, <coughs> excuse me, potassium fluoride as a solid. So to separate this into ions in their gas state, that is um, equal to opposite in sign, the negative lattice energy. So we could look that up. Um, so for this reaction, this is um, 821 kilojoules per mole to take solid potassium fluoride and make ions in the gas state. Heat of hydration is what happens when we mix those with water and they become an aqueous solution. So this is minus 819 kilojoules per mole. And so overall, the change in enthalpy for the solution is plus 2 kilojoules per mole. We have to put energy in to form this solution. So if the absolute value of the solute enthalpy change is less than that of the hydration, the solution process will be exothermic. It's giving off heat, and the solution will feel warm to the touch. So you mix a solid into a liquid, and the liquid becomes warm. That's an exothermic change. If the heat of the solute is greater than the heat of hydration, then the process requires energy to be put in. It'll take that energy in from the surroundings and the solution will feel cool. Any questions?